Well, President Obama's speech could have been taken right from a speech by Benjamin Netanyahu. You go after the leaders by targeted assassination. You give them no asylum in any countries. If they come after us, we go after them. Now, ISIS is going to start hiding. Already it started among civilians and using civilians as hostages. And so Israel has had to confront that as well by using carefully targeted attacks. Now, Israel's ratio of civilians to combatants killed is about one to one. The American NATO ratio is four civilians to every terrorist killed. And I think Israel gives warnings, knocks on the roof, does things to protect civilians. People complain all the time that too many civilians are killed, but it's because Hamas uses what I call the dead baby strategy. They purposely put children and women in harm's way in order to get the media to show these horrible pictures of dead civilians. And the media often doesn't explain that it's because Hamas uses these children as human shields that these deaths are produced. But the problem with your suggestion is that Israel hasn't done, it doesn't seem, a very good job of decimating Hamas. I mean, they, for decades, Hamas has been bringing suicide bombers across the border, launching missile attacks. Decades is not the timeline that the U.S. president or public is comfortable with in fighting ISIS. And that's because the world will not allow Israel to do what it is capable of doing militarily because ISIS has managed and Hamas have managed to use the media to make their case. What ISIS does is it uses the media to show brutality, to recruit. Hamas uses the media to turn the international community against uh, Israel. Um, now, obviously, ISIS is much further away in the United States than Hamas is to Israel. And Israel has a much harder time because it has to attack in very crowded, densely populated areas. Hamas could use less densely populated areas, but that wouldn't induce Israel to kill civilians, and that's their strategy, to get them to kill civilians. But Israel has also used ground forces. They had to. They didn't want to. I met with Prime Minister Netanyahu in his house for dinner uh, shortly after I went into the first tunnel. I told him about the tunnel. He knew about it, obviously. But he was so reluctant to send in ground troops because he knew that ground troops mean Israeli soldiers will be killed, Palestinian civilians will be killed. Are you he suggesting no ground troops can be used in this war against ISIS? It's going to be inevitable. It's going to be necessary. Once ISIS hides its soldiers among civilians, they're going to find that air attacks are going to become harder and harder to do, and they're going to have to be, if not boots on the ground, shine shoes on the ground, by which I mean CIA operatives, uh, other people, uh, special forces. But this war could not be won from the air. But what about President Obama's plan to use local fighters, fighters to use the Peshmerga and to arm moderate fighters, even Syrian rebels? Well, I hope that works. Uh, are there any moderates? You know, moderates that we armed in the past turned against us. And in fact, many of ISIS's arms come from arms we gave Iraq. I hope we can find troops on the ground from other countries. After all, Saudi Arabia, Jordan are much closer to ISIS than the United States. They should fight their own battles. Israel always fights its own battles. And in my book, Terror Tunnels, I explain how difficult it is for Israel to fight these fights because the international community turns against it. My message is, if you support the United States going after ISIS, why do you not support Israel going after Hamas? They're pursuing the same strategy. Israel has a better record of avoiding civilian casualties. And Hamas poses a greater immediate danger to Israel than ISIS poses to the United and States. And you always think that Hamas gets a pass, but you remind everyone that they too are bent on annihilation just the way ISIS is. Not only that, they are bent on forming an Islamic caliphate, the same as ISIS. They murder as many people. They don't behead, but what they do is murder children in their bed like the Fogel family, kidnap young children on the way home from school and murder them. And if Israel didn't have the Iron Dome, they would have killed thousands of people during this war. And yet the United States, thankfully, and Israel working together have created this Iron Dome, which has saved so many lives. But, I mean, of course, you know the American public has no stomach for boots on, American boots on the ground. And, in and I Iraq. understand that because every time we've sent boots on the ground, we've in recent years made a mistake. The Iraq war was a disaster. If we can avoid boots on the ground, that's going to be a very, very important thing to do. It's not clear we'll be able to, but I hope we'll be able to use other people's boots on the ground, not our own. But I think... Israel has served as a model for how to fight terrorists who use human shields and hide in civilian populations. That's the challenge. Alan Dershowitz, remind us of where to find your book today. On Kindle, on Nook, anywhere online, and it's a bargain. It's only $5.98, and it's up to date. I finished it last Thursday. That's incredible. Great stuff. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.